Hi, this is N2QOJ. Uh, this video is going to document the uh, repair and modification of a Kenwood TM231. Approximately 20 year old radio. This is a 2 meter mobile radio. KB9JTN Scott uses this, in his, uh, uses this in his truck. It's got a display, intermittent display problem and the, uh, the very old lithium battery that's in it has to be changed because it's not holding memory and affecting the display as well. This is the radio with the front of it uh, taken off. Uh, it does not have a detachable face like most modern radios. The, the front portion of it comes off into multiple pieces, three pieces. Right there I'm pointing to the processor board. The display board actually fits on that with that little beige connector. That's where it mates. I'm pointing to, to two hold down screws uh, for the um, that board against the frame. That little orange thing there, that round, that's the um, protector for the uh, edge of the 2032 lithium 3.3 volt battery, uh, which is actually on the other side, there it is, of the um, processor board. Uh, it has to be changed. The um, a new one had been inserted, but there you can see on the right side there's some solder blobs and stuff that have shorted that battery out and have um, uh, it's sort of ruined uh, the battery capability. Um, so what we're going to do is replace the battery. The battery is lifted up and it shows there's one problem. The contact is not making connection with that and, uh, battery. That's supposed to be a uh, welded tab. So that's one problem. And what here I'm doing, what I'm doing is looking to see if I can replace that battery and tap onto those tabs. And pretty much I decided that's not going to work. It's just a very difficult thing to do without pre-welded tabs on the battery. So I think what it calls for is buying a battery holder from Radio Shack. And there is, they carry one for a reasonable price. So I went and picked it up. There's the two different boards to so the face. There's the face plate. Uh, so what I need to do is to prep where the old battery was. There's the tabs that were taken off. It's sitting on an insulated pad. I've bent them over and I've gotten out of my junk box a, a red and black wire which I'm going to tin with solder and um, install to uh, the board and then to the battery holder. And eventually it's going to be re routed into the body of the radio away from the face plate so it can be changed in another eight or ten years without having to take that face plate off which is really a bear and also prone to more problems. So there's the leads are installed the board is uh, heavily taped to insulate and now I've attached to the battery holder the two uh, wires out of my junk box. That's going to be also insulated and routed correctly through some uh, depressions in the faceplate uh, frame into the body. And there's the completed processor board with the modifi modification which consists of the wires and the remote now uh, lithium battery holder. So it's got to be reassembled. Uh, before I do that I'm going to measure the new battery with a voltmeter. And it's just under 3.3 volts. 3.3 is the rated voltage uh, and if everything works well, it'll last 8 or 10 years uh, into the radio. Now what I'm going to do is measure the other one that I took out just to verify that it's not up to snuff. And there it is. It's 3.1. It's been degraded because of the solder shorts and so forth. So that's just not going to hold up. That little radio shack, uh, it's always good to have in your, in your kit of uh, tools, uh, a nice little meter. And there's the finished rerouted. You see the it's rerouted into the, the depressions in the cast iron, and it's going to be fine, insulated there. No reason to hold it any further down. It's, it's away from everything. That multicolored connector is for an option board that's not in the radio. Um, so that's just going to be placed gingerly inside and away from everything else. And we also have the speaker that's put back in place. Now Ken would have, it's an interesting design. There's a little holder, plastic holder, there you go, that sits into those little raised 
um, pieces of the frame and the speaker will sit facing up with the back of the speaker which is the magnet in that holder uh, the leads from the speaker have a meeting uh, a plug and it plugs into the board on the left side uh, near the audio circuitry and there it is there's the completed modification now the one thing that had to be done of course was also to repair the display so that beige connector that I mentioned before had to be reworked each one of those leads in that connector had to be propped up and uh, just a little pulled out and put a little bit more spring action into it so it can connect well. It was a very intermittent connection. That's from age, vibration in the truck, and so forth. So that was filled, put out, um, taken care of, and the display board reassembled. Everything was put back together, and now the radio is ready to be turned on for the first time. Now remember the battery had been disconnected, so everything is back to factory defaults, 144. At this point in time, I got my HT out, programmed it up for a simplex frequency, and I was transmitting to the radio. The radio was using not an antenna, but a dummy load, a 50 watt dummy load. And the dummy load is uh, sufficient for reception and transmission in that close proximity to my HT. Good enough for a checkout. And there's the, uh, the simple 50 watt dummy load, which is another great um, you know, tool to have for every ham. Great for HTs, great for mobile radios, it'll handle 50 watts and maybe a little bit more in, you know, with um, very little usage of course. You want to key down for minutes at a time. So that's pretty much it. That's all it took. Everything seemed to power up fine. I'm pressing the function button, changing the dimming levels on the radio. Everything seemed to work fine. So this guy is ready to be uh, cleaned up a little bit, disconnected, and be brought over to KB9, uh, not KB9, JTN, Scott. So that's pretty much it for the repair of this vintage radio. And um, it took a couple hours at least, and a little research on the internet to make sure I knew what the internals looked like. So I was familiar with what I was doing before I actually opened it up. And that's it. This has been N2QOJ with a short video documenting that effort. Thanks again. Bye-bye.